Hello everyone, I'm Akshay Saraswat, Product Manager for Elastic Observability and I have here with me Christos Marco, who is one of the best software engineers working on Elastic Observability. We are here to talk about the monitoring of Kubernetes environments and applications today. Before we begin, I want to give you a snapshot of what to expect. We will discuss the challenges that accompany the benefits provided by Kubernetes. Then uh, Chris will provide us a preview of what onboarding looks like in Elastic Observability. Uh, after that, he will show how to troubleshoot specific scenarios easily with the help of Elastic Observability. And then we will throw a spotlight on some of the important features. Let's take a moment to go through the challenges posed by Kubernetes with regards to observability. I hope everyone here knows the concept and use cases of Kubernetes, how it is different from container runtime environments such as Docker, and why monoliths are being actively replaced by microservices. So I'll not spend much time on this slide. Kubernetes is an open source container orchestrator for automated deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. With a single Docker engine running multiple containers, we can get high availability at the container level. But if the Docker engine crashes or reboots, then all the containers will also go down with it. So the solution to this problem is clustering and managing those clusters with a Kubernetes-like orchestrator. We can cluster multiple worker nodes, each working uh, uh, with a Docker engine, and then we can run containers on them. In this case, if one node goes down, then we have other healthy nodes running the container and keeping our application alive. There is a master node that is taking care of all of this. There will be an orchestrator that will cluster all your Docker nodes and Docker engines together. So this, th this whole thing acts as a single unit or single pool of resources on which your containers can be distributed. Apart from just Clustering Docker engines, Kubernetes provides more advantages such as load balancing, automatic rollout, automatic bin packing, uh, self-healing, secret and configuration management, etc. As you heard just now, Kubernetes dramatically simplifies the act of deploying application in containers and across clouds. But it also adds a new set of problems such as managing application performance, gaining visibility into services, and typical monitoring, alerting, troubleshooting workflow. And why is that? Because Kubernetes makes infrastructure more complex with lots of more components interacting with each other. Each microservice could be distributed across multiple spot instances and pods move across infrastructure as needed thanks to these spot instances. Majority of the times it is hard to see what's inside each pod because of all the noise that is associated with the, with the data that you're collecting. Um, so now observability has become far more important and difficult at the same time. Although Kubernetes has uh, monitoring built in from the ground up, but if you have hundreds of microservices running in your production environment, uh, you need something more than basic data and monitoring. You want to employ different observability strategies depending on uh, the size of your Kubernetes environment and the primary use cases that you have. And that's exactly what we are here to talk about. Based on the stage at which you are in your Kubernetes adoption and microservices migration journey, uh, you may have different questions to ask and in turn different observability use cases. Like when I'm onboarding an app of with 60 microservices, which are the key metrics that I should be tracking? How do I come up with the thresholds to set up alerts? Uh, when browser receives a 500 error, what's happening with the deployments in my Kubernetes clusters? If a pod is continuously restarting, which is that one and why? Uh, when multiple services topple at once, is there any service in the cluster that is having problems with a service in another cluster that is creating this snowball effect? Uh, if my customers are unhappy with the response time of a business service, were there any updates to the pods or VM specs? Which one caused the impact and how was the performance being trending? Uh, observability is a moving target. If you are very mature and have all the answers, your objectives will change. 
maybe you don't want to find a problem after a component has gone off the rails instead you may want to know when there is a possible impending uh, problem uh, and way ahead of major performance impact you would like to know that a container is not running correctly and you want to know why at elastic observability our aim is to enable you to do all of that without any restraints related to frustrating data onboarding slower queries and expensive analysis of historical data chris will now show you how elastic makes kubernetes monitoring a piece of cake uh, over to you chris thank you akshay can you see my presentation okay uh so now uh, all right let's move on to the first part of our demonstration and uh, first of all let's see an overview of our uh, infrastructure and uh, how it looks like so we have three kubernetes nodes and we want to monitor all stacks layers using elastic cloud in order to achieve this we deploy elastic agent on our cluster as a daemon set which means that we deploy one agent pod per node Elastic Agent will be collecting metrics, logs, and uptime data from our nodes and applications that run on top of them. In addition, we can discover specific application pods that, and monitor them using their respective integrations. However, we don't stop here. We add also APM data into our toolset by injecting APM agents into our applications so as to collect traces for them. Let's see all this in action now. Uh, only thing that we need to deploy is Elastic Agent. Let's see how the manifest for Elastic Agent looks like. It's a typical daemon set manifest and uh, each pod, each Elastic Agent pod is configured to get enrolled to our fleet server. We only provide the fleet URL uh, here in the configuration and the enrollment token. Uh, with uh, this, the Elastic Agents will be automatically enrolled to our fleet server. Let's deploy the agents now. Uh, I will be using K as an alias to kubectl so as to interact with my Kubernetes cluster. I will deploy the agents now. Okay, here, here is the fleet uh, page. And uh, here in their enrollment tokens, I can see the secret that I already used for my uh, agent configuration. And here I, I can see that the three agents are already enrolled into the fleet server and I can see them listed here. So now let's go and enable our first integration, which will be the Kubernetes, the Kubernetes integration. With this integration, um, we will be able to collect Kubernetes-related metrics from our cluster, as well as logs from our pods. Let's enable all data streams here. Save integration. And if we go back to data streams and select the Kubernetes integration, we can see that we are collecting metrics already. Let's now see how the predefined dashboard for the Kubernetes integration looks like. Here I will select my cluster and I can already see what is uh, the overview of my cluster. I can see how many nodes I have, how many deployments, pods, uh, what are the available pods per deployment, also the utilization per node or per pod. And uh, this gives me a nice overview of my Kubernetes cluster so far. I will also uh, check how my infrastructure looks like. I'll check for new data here. Here I can see uh, my three Kubernetes nodes. And if I click on one of them, I can see the overview of the metrics that I have so far, the logs, processes that run on the node, metadata, and I can also redirect to other Kibana applications. Uh, let's read down more to the Kubernetes pods now. I will group them per node. And uh, here, for example, I can select the pod. This is an Elastic Agent pod. And I can read down more to check the logs and metrics that I have for this specific pod. 
Here I can see the logs from my pod, and also I can see the CPU utilization, memory usage, and network traffic for my specific pod. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is really nice, but uh, let's 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 search for a specific application. Yeah, here I can see that I have a Redis deployment on my cluster. I have three Redis pods, one pod per node. And I would like to enable a specific integration so as to collect Redis specific uh, metrics for uh, from these services. Let's go back to the integrations page and search for the Redis integration. Here we are. This is the Redis integration. And by enabling this, I will be able to collect Redis specific metrics from my services. I will disable the logs for now, and I will provide the endpoint here. Since the pods are running on host network, I can reach them uh, using the name of the Kubernetes node. So I will save the integration now. And I will go back to data streams, reload, and select now the Redis integration. Here we are. And let's see how the overview dashboard looks like for my Redis integration. And um, okay, here we are. We already are uh, receiving metrics and we can see that we collect metrics from uh, the three uh, Redis pods already. And uh, so far we have seen that we collect metrics and logs for our infrastructure, for our pods. Let's enhance our tool set and uh, start uh, utilizing uptime application that Kibana provides. And for this, I will enable another integration so as to start checking the health of one of my pods that are running on my cluster. Here it is, the Flask API. I have a custom Flask application and I will enable the uptime monitoring for this specific service. I will go to integrations page again and check search for synthetics integration. Here we are. This is the, syn the synthetics integration and I will give it a name, Flask. This is fine. I will provide the URL. This is the, ser the Kubernetes service name under default namespace. I will set the interval to 30 seconds and that's all. Uh, this is a simple HTTP endpoint, but if I had uh, an HTTPS endpoint, I, I would be able to provide the proper certificate so as to reach the endpoint too. I will save the integration now. And I will go to uptime view to check what I have here. Uh, while I'm, wait, I'm waiting for data to be shown here, I will like to define an alert. Actually, I already have an alert defined. Let me quickly uh, explain what I have here. I have an alert for this monitor, which says that if I find uh, this monitor to be down for at least one time within the last 30 seconds, I want to receive a notification uh, to, my, to, a, to a specified Slack channel. And in this, I would be able to uh, start investigating the issue. Let's see, let's say the rule again. And let's see what we have in uptime. Okay, we are already uh, receiving metrics and uh, we can see that uh, our Flask application is up and running and it is healthy. Um, let's add more metrics uh, and I will use, in order to showcase the APM data uh, features, I will use another application which is called Pet Clinic. And uh, this is a Java Spring application and using um, an init container, we, we inject an APM agent, and uh, with this, we are able to collect traces for this specific application. So let's quickly interact. Okay, I will need to expose the service from my Kubernetes cluster. Let's quickly interact with this service. And uh, for example, let's find an owner. Uh, this is an application about pet owners and pets. For example, let's this one, let's add a new pet for this. It's a dog. There is already one dog with his name. Let's edit 
the owner, very nice. Let's interact, let's produce some errors and interact with the application a little bit more. Let's check for myself. Edit. Okay. And uh, let's now see what we have so far. Uh, here it is, the uptime uh, view of my Kibana. And here is the pet clinic application. I can see that I have already metrics being collected and I can drill down more and see each transaction and how, uh, what is the latency for the transaction and what queries are happening for each specific uh, view. I, I can also see what errors I have and um, that's all. And uh, now that we have seen how easily we deployed our agents and we collect a great amount of a great, a great, a great amount and variety of data, uh, let's see how we can leverage this data in order to troubleshoot issues that can occur on our infrastructure. Um, let me quickly switch back to my presentation. And uh, yeah, here we have the troubleshooting demo. Uh, we will have a resource outage scenario. And uh, for this scenario, we will be using the Flask application uh, that I showed uh, previously. And uh, this specific application is CPU, CPU sensitive. This means that each time we hit the, the API of this application, the, the application will check the host CPU utilization. And if it finds it above a specific threshold, then it will return an error. In order to overload the node, we deploy a stress benchmarking pod on the same node. In this, the Flask application will start returning errors and the uptime alert we have defined in Kibana will be, tri will be triggered, sending us the alert message to our Slack channel. We will start then troubleshooting the case to recover the application and bring it back to a health state. Let's see that in action. Uh, let's see what we have in uptime. So the Flask API is already healthy. Let's now deploy the noise enable, the stress pod. And uh, I will go and wait on my Slack channel to receive the notification. I will give it some time, show us the noise enable to take action. I will wait here. No issue yet. Everything is healthy. Okay, here we are. We received a notification and uh, we see that we have a 500 response code and internal, uh, which means that we have an internal server error. Let's start troubleshooting this case now. Let's go. Uh, for the beginning, let's go to the uptime view and see that actually the application is down. Uh, in order to drill down to this, I will use the inventory uh, UI and I will search for my application quickly. Okay, here we can see that, uh, here we can see the application. I will select the specific node. So let me, uh, so let me drill down to the metrics and the logs of this specific Flask application. Here we can see the, the metrics looks look quite normal. And let's see what we have in our logs. Okay, we can see that the pods, uh, the logs, excuse me, uh, indicating some uh, issues with uh, the CPU utilization. Cannot perform requests, CPU is too high on the host. So we can uh, guess that something is going wrong on our host and uh, we will start investigating this issue on this aspect. So let's see what we have here. Let's, uh, for example, we have the overview of our pods running here and we can see uh, the noise enable, the stress pod here, uh, which, is, which seems to be quite uh, CPU intensive. Uh, let's drill down more to its metrics. And uh, yeah, we already saw that uh, the CPU utilization is quite high. So yeah, here we have CPU utilization, which is around 90%. And this is the issue actually. In order to resolve this, we need to uh, evict this specific pod from this specific node. So as to recover 
uh, our Flask API application. Uh, we can just delete the pod or we can apply a CPU limit on the pod, but uh, for now, let's just delete the pod. Okay, I'm deleting the pod now. Uh, it will take some time to be deleted. Let's go back to the uptime application and start and wait for it to become healthy. It's still down. The pod is not deleted yet. I'm waiting, yeah, the pod is deleted, and I expect that now the API will become healthy again. Still down. Waiting. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the API is uh, up again and uh, the monitor is healthy, which means that we resolved the issue for now. Uh, so with this demo, we show how we can combine the different type of data that we collect in order to troubleshoot quickly an issue that occurred on our Kubernetes cluster. And uh, with that, we complete our demonstration part. So now I will pass it back to Akshay to talk a little bit more about the key features that we used in this scenario. Akshay, all yours. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, as uh, Chris was just showing you, uh, Elastic Observability provides you a continuously growing catalog of powerful features that will make your day-to-day -day work much easier. Uh, for example, out-of-box dashboards, when you are overwhelmed and don't know where to start, you can kickstart your observability journey with these dashboards. For every single source of metrics, logs, and traces in Kubernetes, um, if you know exactly what you want, you can also use these dashboards as examples and customize them to meet your needs. And next slide, please. Thank you. Elastic Observability also has an inventory view, which provides a layered animation to group by nodes, namespaces, and several other combinations. This view serves as a dynamic map of your Kubernetes resources uh, which you could reorganize according to your deployment context. All monitored resources emitting a core set of infrastructure metrics are displayed together to give you a quick view of the overall health of your infrastructure so that you have time to focus on other important things. When you run applications on containers, they become moving targets to the monitoring system. Auto-discover allows you to track them and adapt settings as changes happen. By defining configuration templates, the auto-discover system can watch for Kubernetes resource lifecycle events and automatically begin monitoring uh, services as they start running so that you don't have any gaps in your data. If applications are not responding and CPU and memory utilizations are soaring, or if there are signs of attack through alerts, you can see these warnings happen uh, as they happen, not as part of the postmortem. Often the idea to create an alert occurs when you are working with the relevant data. Uh, so we added the ability to create alerts in the moment with a rich flyout menu, no matter if you are fully immersed in the APM metrics, uptime or security application. You can extend your alerts by connecting them to actions that use built-in integrations for popular email clients, messenger applications, uh, IBM Resilient, Jira, PagerDuty, ServiceNow, etc. Alerting inside Elastic Stack also supports a powerful webhook output that lets you tie into third-party uh, systems that matter for your organization. Uh, added observability. We strive every day to make Kubernetes monitoring as easy as snapping your fingers. So I would like to thank you all for your time and attention and welcome your questions and feedback. Uh, thank you so much.